So next thing that we're going to go over in unit 5b is solving one-step equations, right? And this is not anything new, uh, and we have actually been doing this throughout the entire year. So our learning objectives for today at the end of this video is students will know what inverse operations are. Now, once again, we have talked about this throughout this year, but now we're going to really dive a little bit deeper into it to explain them a little bit more. And then the next part of the video that you guys will be able to know how to do is you'll be able to solve one step equations. So we're going to start with very basic, simple equations, and then eventually we'll start working into the more challenging ones. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about inverse operations. All right. So an inverse operation is an operation that undoes what was done by the previous operation. So essentially we're undoing what was already being done to it. And that's a key thing here. You have to realize it's undoing or undoes what the previous operation was. So here I wrote all of our starting numbers and we can represent these by a variable X. And I represent it, started all these starting numbers uh, in black. So these are all the numbers that we are starting with. And then we went through and I added or I performed operations to them. So 10 plus two, that would be equal to 12. Um, 15 minus 4, that will be equal to 11. 6 times 5, that will be equal to 30. And 16 divided by 8, that will be equal to 2. All right, so we performed these operations. Now, if we're looking for inverse operations, that means we're looking to see, well, how can we undo what this operation, this previous operation was, or how can we get back to that original number? So if we add it to, to 10, how do we get back to two? Well, we can then subtract, I'm sorry, how do we get back to 10? Well, we can then subtract two. If we subtract it four from 15, how do we get back to 15 from 11? Well, we can add four. If we times five, if we times six with five, how do we get back to our original number to get back to six? Well, we can divide by five. And if we divide it 16 by eight, how do we get back to our original number to 16? Well, we can then multiply by eight. So if you see 12 minus two is equal to 10, 11 plus four is equal to 15, 30 divided by five is equal to six, and two times eight is equal to 16. So if you see here, our original starting number and our ending number are exactly the same in all of our cases. So that means with these operations that we were originally being done, so in this plus two minus four times five and divided by eight, that means all of these operations here are their inverse operations, right? So let me just go ahead. I'm going to write out our PEMDAS because we will be using this uh, in reverse when we start learning multiple step equations. But our inverse operations are addition and subtraction are inverse operations to each other. So as I showed you here, let me erase this highlight just so it's not as dark. Um, so as I showed you here, if we were to start with the number, in this case 10, and we add it, any number to it, if we subtract the same number from it, we will end up in our original starting place. So 10 plus two minus two is equal to 10. 15 minus four plus four will be back to 15. Because in the end, our inverse operations will cancel each other out to zero if we're adding or subtracting, or in the case of multiplying or dividing, they will cancel out to give us a one. Because times five divided by five is essentially multiplying the number by one. Divided by eight and times eight is multiplying the number by one. So it's bringing us back to our original case, right? So that's what you guys need to know for right now is our inverse operations are addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. So if we wanna undo division, we need to multiply. If we wanna undo multiplication, we need to, we need to divide. If we wanna undo addition, we will then subtract. If we wanna undo subtraction, we will then add. Right? So it's very, very important that you understand these inverse operations that are now being done. Because right? this is what we're going to use in order for us to go ahead and solve um, for our any equation that we have. Uh, before we go into that, I am going to write all these out one more time where we will use variables instead of actual numbers. Uh, and then from there, we'll start answering some problems. All right, so if we have these problems here, if we have x plus 5 and I want to get rid of that plus 5 and go back to my original starting number, which is x, well, my inverse operation would be subtraction. So if I minus 5, that will bring me back to my x. If I have x minus 3 and I want to go ahead and solve or, or isolate my variable x, well, the inverse of minus 3 is plus 3, and that will bring me back to my original value x. Same thing, if I'm multiplying by 2, well, when I divide by 2, 
2 divided by 2 is 1, so that will bring me back to my original value x. And if I go ahead and divide by 8 and I multiply by 8, they will undo each other and it will bring me back to my original number x. All right, so these are very, very important for you to know how to solve. All right, we're going to go through one more thing before we go ahead and get into any problems uh, or examples. We're only going to have a couple examples. Most of this video is going to be going over how to solve it. All right, this is the other thing that is very important when we are going to solving equations. All right, so if I have these four statements, uh, 5 is equal to 5, 10 is equal to 10, 4 is equal to 4, and 22 is equal to 22, we have to make sure that we are being consistent in the way that we are solving these. And what that means is if I go ahead and I want to do an inverse operation and I add 2 to this side and I get 5 plus 2 is equal to 7, well, you notice 7 does not equal 5 anymore. So what this is showing us that if we want to make sure, because we know that these two values are equal to each other, it's telling us that right here that 5 is equal to 5. And if we want to maintain that they are equal, well, when we add 2 to one side, we must add 2 to the other side as well. Otherwise, they will not remain equal anymore. And as I showed you before, if we only added 2 to the left-hand side and we did not add 2 to the right-hand side, we are now getting an equation that says 7 is equal to 5, and that's not true. So when we are doing this, what you do to one side, you must do to the other because we need to balance it, all right? We need to keep them balanced. And five plus two in both cases is equal to seven, all right? So over here, if I wanted to subtract three from this side, well, 10 minus three is seven. Well, seven does not equal 10 if I did not subtract three from the other side as well. So that means in order to keep my equation balanced, I must subtract three from the other side as well and that way seven is still equal to seven, right? So you saw in these first two examples when we're adding or subtracting, if we only add it to one side or only subtract it to one side, it no longer keeps our equation balanced and it actually will give us an equation that is not equal. So that's why it's important that you guys understand that what we do to one side, we must, we must, we must do to the other. And that doesn't only follow for addition and subtraction as well. If I were to multiply, let's say that we do four times five. Well, four times five is 20. And if we didn't multiply the other side, 20 does not equal four anymore. So we know that we now have an equation is not balanced, that is not equal. So what we do to one side by multiplying by five, we must do to the other in order for this to maintain um, that the two sides are balanced and that the two sides are equal. And then the last thing, if we were to say divide, well, if I go ahead and divide this by two, well, 22 divided by two is 11. If I do not divide the other side, 22 does not equal 11. So that means that our equation is not balanced or it is not equal. So in order for us to keep this equal, we must divide this side by two as well. And 22 divided by two is 11. So therefore we now have a balanced equation. All right, this, I'm going to start really big. This is really important, and this is the mistake that I see people make all the time, is that they don't keep their equations balanced, all right? And uh, we'll go through, when we learn two-step equations, uh, when you will add it to both sides and when you're only just combining like terms on one side, all right? But in this case, we need to make sure that we're remembering to keep our equations balanced. All right, so now we're gonna go through one example of each type, and that'll be it for this video. Uh, this won't take long from this point forward, though. So the way that we use this is when we're trying to solve for a variable in an equation. So we're trying to solve an equation. So in this case, we have x plus 5 is equal to 10. Now, I know that this question or this equation is really simple, that you guys will be able to do this in your head without showing any work. But it's really important that you show me your work. Without showing me your work, you will not get credit for this because this, the way to solve this is not guess and check. The way to solve this is through using your inverse operations and showing me your work and how you are uh, undoing all the operations to your variable in order to isolate your variable. So in this case, if we are adding five to it, well, what is the inverse operation to addition? Well, the inverse operation to addition is subtraction. So that means I would subtract five to undo this operation of x plus five, and that will bring me back and isolate my variable x. Now. As we just talked about, what we do to one side of our equation, we must do to the other because if I'm subtracting 5 from here, it's no longer equal to 15 because I showed you that it's no longer balanced unless you're doing that same operation of both sides. So we would have to do 15 minus, 10, uh, 15 minus 5, which is 10. 
All right, so that shows us how we're getting this answer of 10 and not just, oh, I can look at this and I know that 10 plus five is 15. No, we need to show all of our work. And the good thing about doing these types of problems, if you wanna check your work and see if you're right, plug it back in to your equation and see 10 plus five, that is 15. Check, it does give me my final answer. All right, so then we'll move on to the next one. Here we have X minus three. Well, our original operation is subtraction. And what is our inverse operation of subtraction? Well, it is addition. So when we have X minus three to isolate that variable X, we will then do the inverse operation of minus three, and that'll be plus three. And we know X minus three, so if you wanna write it down underneath next to it, X minus three plus three, we know that this is going to cancel out. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other, otherwise it's no longer balanced. So now it's equal to 27 plus three. And X minus three plus three, well, they will cancel each other out because they're inverse operations. So X is then equal to 27 plus three, which is 30. And once again, if you want to check your work, we can plug it back in. 30 minus 3 does equal to 27. Check. All right, our next problem that we have here. So now we look and see, well, what operation are we performing between this x and this 9? Well, it's 9 times x. So that means we are multiplying. And what is our inverse operation of multiplication? Well, it is division. So in this case now, when we want to undo this, we would have x, 9 times x, and then we would divide it by 9. And that will then be equal to 54 divided by nine. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And we know our inverse operations, when we are dividing and multiplying by the same number, they'll cancel each other out to one. So now we're just left with one X is equal to 55, 54 divided by nine, which is six. And we don't have to write the one in front. We can just write it as X is equal to six because every variable, their coefficient is understood if there's nothing there, is understood to be one. So if you don't write it, then that means that we know that a one is in front of that, All right? And once again, if we wanna check our work, we can go ahead and plug it back in and we can say, does nine times six equal to 54? And yes, it does. All right, I just wanna show you another way that you can show your work here. Rather than writing out this, what we could do is we can write it as a fraction and because that is also division. And that way it's a little bit clearer, a little bit easier for us to write our work and write this division sign every time. All right, so this is a way that you can show your work to me uh, instead of writing it with a division sign. But if you prefer this method, by all means, go ahead and show your work this way if that's what you prefer. All right, and now on to our last question. So we have x over three is equal to 22. Well, first, what operation does this represent? Well, a fraction bar represents division. And what is the inverse operation of division? We know it's multiplication. So that means when I'm doing this, to get rid of division, I will need to multiply. And what I do to one side, I must do to the other, otherwise it is no longer balanced. And we know three divided by three is going to cancel out to one, so I will just have x is equal to 22 times three is 66. And if I wanna plug it back in and check my work, 66 divided by three does in fact equal 22, check. All right, so you must, you must show your work. If you do not show your work, you will not get any credit for it. So when you're answering all of these questions, make sure you're writing it nice and neat in your notebook, because if I ask to see your work and there's no work there and just the answers, you will not get credit. All right, and especially on any assessment as well. That is it for this video.